In 2012, my wife and I made a tour of the major Hindu temples of the state of Tamil Nadu in South India. Many of these are devoted to the god Shiva, the destroyer. Throughout Tamil Nadu, five major temples have been dedicated to Shiva as, called, as Lord of the Elements. We organized our temple tour primarily around the Shiva temples associated with these five elements. However, we also stepped at the city of Tanjavur, whose magnificent Shiva temple is not dedicated to any particular element, but made it to UNESCO's World Heritage List. This Brihadishwara temple was completed in the year 1010 of the Common Era and is a famous architectural monument of the Chola Empire. A replica of the same temple is found at Kangai Konda Cholapuram, remnant of a defunct Chola capital and the subject of another one of our Tamil Nadu temple tour installments. <laughs> The Brihadishwara temple is one of Tanjavu's main sites. Its adoption by the UNESCO and by the Department of Archaeological Services of India has resulted in a well-kept and remarkably tidy area. All Hindu temples are to be visited on bare feet, but instead of treading the piping hot stone pavement, strips of carpet have been laid out for the pilgrims and especially the, the tourists' comfort. This is also one of the few temples in Tamil Nadu where the visitor is welcomed at the gate by a clear map of the temple area and even toilets while an interpretation center is found inside. <laughs> The temple area, somewhat aloof from the town centre of Tanjavur, is adjacent to the Anikut Grand Canal and the Se Apu Naikan Tank, an irrigation basin dating back to Chola times. The temple area is enclosed in a heavy wall with battlements. Three gateways lead to the inner temple area, again walled so that its inner side forms a pillared cloister arcade, adorned with recently rediscovered frescoes and lined with lingams and other sculptures, some on museum-like display. Between the inner gate and the main temple building is the Nandi Mandapa, a splendidly decorated pillared hall containing Shiva's mount, the Nandi bull. He is six meters long and hewn from one block of granite. The main temple building is situated along the same east-west axis. On the far side from the gates, it rises to a 66 meters high Vimana a pyramidal tower built over the 4 meter high central lingam, here represented as often inserted in its female counterpart. Among the exquisite sculptures adorning the outside and inside of the building, two Dwarapala door guards are particularly famous. The Vimana is crowned by an amazing architectural achievement, the octagonal cupola sculptured again out of one 80 tons block of granite. Immediately south of the Vimana is the Ganesha Shrine, 
dedicated to this god, also known as Ganapati and Pilaya, a very ancient primal god with Hinduism features as son of Shiva. This shrine echoes in miniature the overall shape of the main temple. Behind the Vimana is the Kuruvar Deva shrine, center of chanting and distribution of consecrated food. In the northwestern corner of the court is the Subramanya shrine, dedicated to Shiva's other son, also known as Murugan, Kartikeya, Skanda or Kataragama. Among several other buildings we mention, due northwest of the gates, the Amang shrine and the Nataraja shrine, the latter dedicated to Shiva as Lord of the Dance. It is in this capacity that Shiva is also venerated in the main temple of this town, Chidambaram, also part of our temple tour. Despite the national and international bureaucratic overlay, the temple is very much a place of living in Hindu worship, and therein lay its main attraction to us, notwithstanding the splendor of its layout, architecture and sculptures. Throughout our temple tour, we have been familiarizing ourselves with the splendor of South Indian, especially Chola, art and architecture. Temple after temple, we try to satisfy our personal, spiritual needs by seeking access to the inner sanctum, sometimes successfully. But it was particularly at Tanjavur's Brihadishwara temple that we witnessed priestly prayer, collective chanting, people massively sharing the sacrificial food and individuals engaging in passionate personal prayer. A common Western misconception of popular Hinduism is that it is all about ritualized gregariousness and veneration of conventionalized objects. The footage of this movie shows otherwise. <laughs> Not unlike Catholic and Orthodox Christian churches in their dealings with saints, Hindu temples, even when primarily dedicated to the cult of one particular god, yet may contain many additional cults of other gods, as we have seen. Typically also the tree cult, as a little tradition found all over the old world, is represented at the major temple by a sacred tree, sometimes associated with the goddess Mamiya. At the foot of the tree, stone sculptures of intertwined snakes are placed, also found from ancient Greece to China, and evocative of the primal serpent, cosmogony and the first pair of beings. Here one prays for children, adding force to the quest by tying ribbons to the branches and hanging miniature cradles there. The relaxed atmosphere of familiarity surrounding the tree shrine indicates a popular cult older than the formal and literate Hindu great tradition. <laughs> This concludes our impression of Tanjavur's Brihadishwara temple. More installments on our journey along Tamil Nadu temples are to follow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> 